Hello and welcome to Debits and Credits, a chart that will help you uh, always get your debits and credits right, uh, both in terms of two sets of questions. Um, one where we've been given a trial balance, um, which I've got here, say put these figures into the correct debit and credits uh, lines and add them up. And what I've done here is I've done them for the balance sheet and I've also done them as well for the profit and loss account. People find the balance sheet uh, the easier part of it there, there and then start to struggle when we get to this sort of profit and loss account uh, area. So I'm going to do that. And then what I've done is I've produced an empty version uh, for you as well. And that will be useful in terms of um, being able to do your journals as well. So how does this work? Well, remember in the last video, I provided you this accounting equation, assets equals liability plus equity, and assets that are increasing are a debit, and assets that are reducing are a credit, and liability and equity that's increasing as a credit, and liability and equity that's reducing as a debit. Okay, so what I've done really in this chart is I've converted that into a chart in here. I've done the accounting equation across the top, assets equals liability plus equity, and you'll notice here um, that this is sort of then lining up in the trial balance as being debits and credits in here. So in the trial balance, it would line up. Within your journals and the account and the um, entries that you would be putting into T accounts, um, the assets and the liabilities uh, could be debits or credits in individual journal entries. And you could have two assets in the, uh, or more than more than multiple assets or and no liabilities in a journal, or you could have all liabilities and, and no assets in, in journal. So so it's, um, but when we get to our trial balance, our debits are gonna equal our credits and our assets are gonna equal our liabilities plus equity. I know I've got this here. Remember, note here though, this is different to the statement of financial position. So this is from the company's perspective, where the assets will equal the liabilities plus equity. It's always going to equal the same, and our trial balance is going to balance. From the individual's perspective, the assets minus liabilities equals equity. And so this is the statement of financial position from the individual shareholder's point of view. So this could be a plus or a minus in here at the end. And there though, hopefully a, a positive position. We, we, we make money. Um, but you know, that is why. This is not the state of the accounting equation. This is the statement of financial position, and this is the accounting equation. And actually, this is the key the key reason why people often struggle with um, with their profit and loss account uh, debits and credits because they're looking at this and then trying to do too many equations really rather than looking over here. So, what we're going to do then? Uh, let me take you through. I've laid this out in a uh, in a balance sheet that will typically be um, general agreed accounting principles. And what that will do is it will tend to have the longest time the asset's going to take to turn into cash down to the shortest time, obviously cash, uh, then the most pressing um, uh, liabilities, really the other things that we need, that are we going to be having to pay very quickly, so our loans and our overdrafts, to our least pressing um, things that are over one year and then things that go out for a long period of time. So that's typically how it's sort of laid out for assets and liabilities. And then we have our equity at the bottom. So what are these items? Well, brands, intangible assets are something which you can't really touch. They've got a value. So imagine YouTube, you know, it's got a big value, that brand. Um, you know, the actual, sh you know, servers and whoever developed the website, the software code, or whatever, you know, was, 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 was valuable. But the actual brand itself and all of the subscribers and all the people who put their videos on and everything else about that, that's the real value in there. But you can't touch it. Um, and it doesn't really have a... Have a cost uh, that, that, that you can sort of you know, perfectly work out. There's not an invoice that's going behind it, but it certainly has a value. Now, you may have cho chosen to, to um, value that, that that brand and put that on the balance sheet. Um, certainly, if we, let's say, a, um, a confectionery manufacturer, so we're sort of Nestle or what have you, or we're a drinks manufacturer, let's say Diageo, uh, we, would, we would be valuing our brands. Um, so, you know, we, we want to um, we want to have the value of Kit Kat, let's say, on there for Nestle. Um, so we've got some value for that, but we can only really realize that value if we're going to sell it. You know, we're going to sell that 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 brand and that that um, that company, or certainly a substantial part of the company. It's going to take some time for that. So that one's what goes first. Then we've got a land and buildings, which take longer than a, a, a car. So in terms of our fixed assets, we can touch these assets, and then we have our investments. We can sell those, you know, reasonably quickly, and um, maybe not not immediately. Then we've got our stock. Well, that's the things that we sell. That's what we sell all, all day. But we've already sold it to the trade debtors. And the debt of prepayments and then cash a bank in their hands. So all of these can be turned into our assets because they are cash or can be turned into cash. They have a value in terms of in terms of cash value. And in terms of our trial balance, this thing here, we've gone from zero to this what's ever in this trial balance, so they're all going up. So in here, all of these assets 
would be going up. Kept my finger on the uh, on the on the button there for too long. Control C and Control V. Okay, there we go. So there's our assets, and our asset value is 18, 18,000. Now all of these liabilities then um, are ones that are most pressing to ones that are least pressing. <coughs> so these values here uh, are all owed to somebody who's not a shareholder, and they're all going up. So they would be credits. So this bit in our question is usually quite easy. Now it gets a little bit more tricky. So what we've got then is we've got our equity. Well, our open equity is the amount that we owe to our shareholders. And we've gone from 0 to, 0 to 0, uh, from 0 to, uh, to our, our 5,000. This is the amount that they put in at the, start, at the start of the year, the amount that we owed our shareholders. And that's that. But now we've got to now think about the, the profit and loss count items. Well, basically, if it's anything that increases profit, then it's something that would be owed to the shareholders because the shareholders get any any profit. So if we make some money, make some profit, our assets are going to be greater than our liabilities and whatever's left over is profit and is owed to the shareholders. So if our sales there is something that increases profit, that is going to be a credit because things that increase our equity, our shareholders, uh, are owed to our shareholders, is, um, is a credit value. So note here, this way that from the company's perspective, it always equals and balances that these assets uh, equals liabilities plus equity. So yes, this position for the shareholders is going up, but also this position for the asset is going down compared to the liability, but it's much easier to have it laid out like that. So sales going up is a credit. Our purchases are expenses, that, that, that reduces our profit. So that is something that will reduce the amount that we owe to the shareholders, so that is a debit. Our interest received is a credit, and our staff costs would be an expense reducing our profit, would be a debit. Thank goodness that adds up. Uh, so here then, our equity is opening equity, plus the sales, minus the cost of the purchase, plus that interest received, minus the staff costs. And so those two are 18,000, and equal to that, and our child balance balances. So that would be how we would do a question where we've been told, um, here's your child balance. So let's see what, what it does in the profit and loss account. What I've done here is I've, I've put them all, all in, in here. And again, this sort of step one is, is this an income or is this an expense? Is it something that's going to increase profit? Is it something that's going to reduce profit? No, really. Um, so sales is going to increase profit and um, expenses are going to reduce profit. So is it an income or is it an expense? Step two then is to work out, well, well is this income uh, increasing or is the expense reducing? In which case it's going to increase profit and that's going to be a credit. If the income is reducing or the expense is increasing, that's going to reduce profit. So that's going to be a debit. Um, and so that is um, how that's going to work its way through. Um, and so we can see we've got this. Let me just close this in a second. Uh, so we've got this sort of this chart, and we can just go through our various items from here. Now, hopefully, you will see that that, that is a, a, a pretty sort of straightforward uh, version in there. Uh, what I will do then is then we get down to this bottom bit, this step three. And we've got to work out whether we're making a profit or a loss. So if our um, sales, or if our, you know, our sales items or our income items are greater than our debit items, then we're making a profit, and this is going to be a credit. If our expenses items are greater than our income items, then we make a loss, and our debits will be greater than our credits, and then that would go back into our balance sheet as our profit for the year. So in this instance, I would say that we made a profit, so it's a credit. And that really is, is how that, that works in terms of taking a trial balance and turning it into debits and credits uh, just through, through this, this, this method. Now what I'm going to do then is I'm going to sort of take us uh, back a bit. And we're now going to, I've taken some of these lines out now in here. And so step one, we're going to work out, you know, is this an asset? Is this a liability or is this an equity? Well, I've left those in. Let's see now we're going to buy a car for cash. So we're going to work out, well, we bought this car, that goes up, so it will be a debit. 
And we bought it with cash. So we had to pay out that cash. So that's gone down. So that's a credit. Let's say now um, we have the shareholders and they give us £10,000 worth of um, cash. Let's take those two out. Well, our new share, ca share capital has gone up and the cash that they've given us has gone in the bank. So that's gone up. And perhaps they also gave us um, a, a, some stock as well. But they also as well handed over the cost of the lease. And so those are our debits and credits. Let's go into the profit and loss account. Let's say we sell some um, some items in here. So what we do now, then is we go, is this an income and expense? So does this increase the income? Does this reduce the expense? So let's say we've sold something. Well, that's going to create a debit. Uh, sorry, a credit. But we were given a discount allowed after that. So that is going to be, um, so we went and gave, it, gave out a discount allowed for this, uh, this sale. So we've now decided to give them a discount allowed and that would be a debit. And then we decided to go and give them a prompt payment. So that's going to be increasing our expenses. And so that would be a debit. Okay. But let's now assume that we're going to go the other way around. So we've decided we've got an irrecoverable debt in here. Okay. So that's going to be increasing our expenditure to cost. That would be a debit. Yeah. Um, and so generally all that we're going to do is just play around with this, or you're going to have these sort of various items, um, you know, dividends received. Well, what does that do? Well, that increases our income. And so that would be a credit. So the charts are useful in terms of um, what you're going to do if you're faced with this whole trial balance, and we're going to put it into our debits and credits. The individual empty ones, if you really want to just, a, if you want a bit of help in terms of how to um, create a journal, so let's say we're now deciding whether we're going to go for, and remember, notice this, this, this turnover is net of VAT. So we've, we've gone, let's say we've got some openings, opening stock. So we've had to put that in. So that would be an increasing expense. Uh, we've got some purchases that we've made. And uh, we received some discounts on that. So that would be reducing our expenditure. And also as well, we've got some closing stock that we're putting into a balance sheet. So that reduces our expenditure. And so that's just how it, how it works. So you can see how these how these things these things are going. Um, let's say though we are going to go the other way around and we want to reverse out a journal. So we're doing we've got to reverse out an incorrect journal <coughs> uh, that we've made. Let's say to the sales ledger control account. Well, we will be reducing the income, and so that would be a debit. And let's say we made a mistake here and we overdid the rent, so we were reducing the expense. Sorry, that's an increasing, you're reducing the expense, sorry. So that would be a credit. So we can use this to actually prepare our journals, but most often I think you'll probably use this side of it um, if you've got to try and reverse a journal. So we're doing the opposite thing. So we put the energy in there and we put it in at, at 2,000 pounds rather than 200 pounds. We've got to reverse that, that, that down. So what we would do is to reduce the expense down from 2,000 to uh, 200, and that would be a credit. So. Um, links in the description for the chart. Uh, hopefully you should find it find it useful. Um, thanks for listening. Bye bye.